Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. We just released our latest video on building a workbench. Happens to be the one that I'm leaning against. If you're just getting into hand woodworking or if you're transitioning from power tool background, you're going to discover real quick how essential a good bench is. There's some features that I'm going to share with you that, are, that you've got to have them in that bench in order to enjoy this process. Uh, by the way, that video, which is four and a half hours long, covers everything from selecting the materials to building the base, building the top. It even includes some of the accessories like a uh, sharpening station, uh, attaching the vise. And it also includes a cut list as well as plans to actually uh, follow as you're building the bench. But what are you looking for in a good bench? I think the most critical thing is that the top be nice and flat. This becomes your reference face. You're dimensioning a piece of lumber, it's got to be sitting on something that is flat. So this becomes the surface that you actually will test your pieces against. Now the nice thing about MDF, in particular, three inch thick MDF. Now that's made out of three one inch pieces, but when glued together, you may as well consider it a three inch thick piece of MDF. Good and stable, nice and flat, hard wearing surface. Yes, it can be damaged, but you know, I've had uh, people cut into it with a dovetail saw. Simply take some cyanacrylate, run it in that little spot, flush it off, and it's good to go. So a nice flat surface, number one. Number two, it needs to be sturdy. It can't rack. Well, if you look underneath, the base is made out of four pieces of 5 8 inch Baltic birch. Now, you know, if you glue two pieces of wood together and it's a decent glue joint, those two pieces become one. Baltic birch, nice thing about it is it's a whole bunch of layers of that same Baltic birch. So when you're done, you end up with a two and a quarter inch thick piece of plywood, both for the stretchers and for the uprights. It's bolted together with three eighths inch lag bolts, uh, pardon me, stove bolts. So when everything is secured, it's not moving. It is not going to rack on you at all. It weighs just under 200 pounds, so it's not going to slide around the floor as you're trying to plane something. So that's the criteria. That part of the criteria is covered. Next thing, and, and perhaps one of the more important, is the vise. Now, what we utilize is a Schoberg vise. And I'll just unwind this and show you the biggest feature. Instead of having round tubes, they use two rectangular pieces. That allows for some bolts underneath here to take any of the, any of the rack out so it does not slide side to side. That means. When you're securing a piece of wood that you're going to uh, cut dovetails in or whatever, it clamps and holds it tight all the way across the width. So when you're sawing, you don't get any irritating vibration that makes it difficult to be accurate. That same vise mount on the end also holds your workpiece secure if you're going to do some planing. In between a couple of bench dogs, you can do everything you need to. It's not going to move nice and stable. Finally, easy to build. You're just getting into this. You don't have a ton of clamps. You may be lacking some experience, but you want to get started. When I developed this bench, designed it about uh, almost 10 years ago, that was the thought I had in mind. How do you get somebody started that does not have a, a rack of clamps like I have over there? Well, in the process of building 30 of these over that past 10 years, we've streamlined the process and we've reduced the number of tools required. In fact, you can almost build this without any clamps at all. The base is put together using a quarter inch crown staple gun and glue. The staple gun holds it together until the glue dries. And as I mentioned, now you've got one solid piece of wood. Uh, the, even the top, the way we put it together, as you'll see in the video, requires no clamps whatsoever. And yet the glue joints are nice and tight. Fantastic bench. This is something that you can build in a weekend. Imagine about $100 worth of materials plus the cost of the vise and a weekend of work and you've got yourself a bench that you may never have to replace. We use Schoberg's aluminum bench dogs, nothing more than drilling one inch holes and because they're aluminum, if you happen to hit them with your bench or your plane, you're not going to destroy your plane. If you're looking for a good bench, if you have a limited budget and if you have a little bit of skill and want to get started, check out this video. Uh, download it or order it. Get yourself a sheet of one inch MDF. So that's a little bit hard to find, but it is available. If you can't, you can always use four pieces of three quarter. 
It's just nice to have the one inch because you've got one less glue joint to worry about. Baltic birch is pretty much readily available everywhere you go. Follow the plans, build the bench, get started, and enjoy hand tool woodworking. Go. We are uh, live. Rob. Are we good? Yes. Kyle Perel. Brother. Kyle. One of our uh, first. He, he and just, Jesse were our first. Little patches up first two autograph. Canadians to uh, come okay. to our online work. Our, our online. Our workshop. Kyle Newfoundland Regiment. And Jesse uh, Princess Patricia is out in um, Alberta. I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you. I haven't talked to you. Glad you're here. I also want to say hello to all of our uh, viewers in the UK and uh, East, uh, in Europe. Glad you guys were able to stay up. Talk to a few of you today. And special shout out to Jake. Remind me. You're not going to remind me? I don't know it. You told me earlier. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No. Yeah, he did. Okay, he says he didn't. What else am I supposed to remember, Frick? Nothing. Okay. Um, when are we bringing on Jake? Uh, in about half an hour, 45 okay. minutes. All right. So our, our Purple Heart introduction will be done by uh, one of our combat wounded vets from this past year, Jake, in Michigan. Oh, Michigan? Minnesota. Minnesota. It's cold there. Um, getting, so we're working on, we're working on Angie's, Angie's bed desk. That's Angie. By way of introduction, Angie is Ken's cousin. She's also a member of our online or our our team. Angie, oh yeah, okay. Angie does all the t-shirts. She and her sister package them all up, and when you get them, there'll be a little A on the stamp, and that's Angie. And we have a picture of who's the pilot from uh, the pilot from over in Netherlands. Oh, Iceland. Iceland. Sibby. Sorry, Sibby. S really. Sent us a picture, and he took Angie. He took your that new little logo you have, and put it right on. He's got the A right on his shirt. So, awesome. So, what we're doing for Angie is we're making her a bed desk so that she can better hold her laptop as she views our episodes. So, these are the parts that we've been working on, and uh, we're going to get farther than this tonight. But before we go any further, I want to just briefly tell you up front what the Purple Heart Project is. Jake will give you a, uh, a personal view of it. S uh, six times a year, we have a uh, class, a six-day class, very intense hand tool workshop. I'm going to show you a picture because I haven't done this before. And in that workshop, we teach traditional hand tool woodworking. So that means building furniture with just hand tools, no power. And I want to show you some samples of something that we're adding to it, the curriculum starting this year. Oh, I wish I was taller. Just a second. Wish came true. So Monday sharpening, Tuesday dovetails, Wednesday dimensioning lumber, Thursday half-blind dovetails and dimensioning parts and start to work on the uh, on the box. I gotta shut this off or else it might drive us nuts, at least I hope. Thursday, it went Friday is mortise and tenon. Saturday is more of everything. So what we'll do is we will build a candle box. You can do whatever you want with the lid. So the parts will all come from rough lumber. Now, just in case you're not familiar with that term, rough lumber, I'm looking for a piece to show you, is here. Here's a piece of rough lumber. So there's a piece of pine that came from the mill. It's been sawn, dried, but that's how you get it. So it's not flat. It's not uh, the same width, certainly wouldn't be the same thickness, and it's rough exterior. And we take that and we turn it into a piece of finished lumber that is dimensionally accurate, smooth, finished. And here are some of the boxes that I've done over the years when we've taught the class. We used to do this, now we brought it back because uh, we've increased the length of the class. So this box is made out of poplar and mahogany, has half blind dovetails, so that you can cut a groove in the bottom and you can cut it with our drawer bottom plane, which is this little thing right here. And that has to pass all the way through. So if you had a through dovetail, you'd see the end. 
So half blinds, you don't do that because the groove goes between the pins on this piece, and it can go anywhere. It can go anywhere inside the tail on this piece, but because that's hidden, you don't see it. And then I just got a little creative with the lid, and I decided to make it round. There's a little rabbit to fit in there, so it'll hold on. Here's one made out of cherry. Same idea, half blinds. Um, cherry lid, just a little bit of shape to it. Here's one out of pine, a little more complicated in that it has a sliding lid. And uh, there's a couple of other options for doing the joint. You can do a step dovetail, which allow you to hide that. So that's what the class will entail. And every time we teach a class, there are six civilian students, of which right now, by the way, there are two spots left in October. One. Two spots left in October and two left the end of August. End of August is a new class. Because of the virus, we've had to bump the May class up to the end of October. We had a couple people that weren't able to do it, so there's a few spots open there, but that's it. In every class, there's also six combat wounded veterans. These come from mostly the United States, but we have no bias. We take them from anywhere. We've had, uh, we've had a Nazi. We've had four Canadians to date and 83 Americans. So uh, any combat wounded vet whether it's a physical wound or a mental wound, as long as it is battle related, is welcome to apply. And I say that only because that's our little slice of the pie. That's where we're trying to gain some experience, I, I hesitate to say expertise, in dealing with these folks and helping these folks. I have no don't know anything about the ins and outs of it. All I know is we teach them woodworking and it seems to calm them and it works, as you'll hear tonight from Jake. So if you know anybody that fits that, by all means, please pass on the information to them. All they have to do is go to robcosman.com, and if you, on the toolbar at the top on the left says PHP, Purple Heart Project, drop-down menu has a ton of information. Luther made sure of that. And you go in there, the application to fill out, you do have to fill it out. Remember, we don't know you. We have to administer this like triage in a hospital and try to find those individuals that are hurting the most that need our help as quick as possible. So you have to fill out the details. And I apologize if it seems to be intrusive, but we have no other way of knowing who we're dealing with. Uh, we're not flooded, so we have lots of uh, don't, don't, don't not apply because you think your chances are slim. Sometimes we only get twice as many as we can take, meaning we had room for 15 and we only had 32 or 33 applicants. Um, if, yes, so anyway, just and wrap this up real quickly. We cover their airfare, their hotel, their meals, and we send each vet home with, um, a pro now it's about 3,200 US dollars worth of tools. And I have to mention some of our sponsors, so I'm gonna help, I'm gonna come back to that. We're also, this is exciting, we have introduced a new program called the Bench Brigade, spearheaded by uh, Jack Lane down in Texas. And Jack is just <coughs> awesome. And he's taking this thing by the bull by the horns. He's uh, we're really looking for Canadian. We need some Canadian volunteers. So what you're volunteering to do is this. You're volunteering to build, sorry, I don't have a sample of it here, our $100 bench or the Cosman workbench, which is made out of MDF and plywood. We will supply the bench dogs and the vice. You will supply the materials, and you will arrange to ship it or deliver it to that vet. Uh, we're, Jack's working to try to get it so that you're delivering to somebody as close as possible. Uh, we have at least three Canadians that have been accepted for this first round, which is 18 spots. So out of the 18, three of them are Canadians, so we need some Canadian sponsors. Don't want to get into the hassle of having it built in the U.S. and then shipping it across the border. So if you're a Canadian and you think you can do it, the skill level that required is not that great. We will provide you with the recent video that we just came out with, along with the cutting list and the, all the details, and we're here to help as well. Now, by way of giving thanks. Tom Lee Nelson of Lee Nelson Toolworks has generously donated two mortise chisels to, uh, to us each time. And I don't mean two. I mean two for each vet. Is it half and, what do we use, half and quarter? So that's a lot of mortise chisels. He gives them to us. He has agreed to sell me wholesale because I asked him to. I said, I said, you donated enough. Just we'll take, we'll pay for it. The uh, skew block plane is an awesome plane for joinery. And he has made it so that hopefully their production will be able to be back up and running. They'll be able to sell us uh, one of those for every vet that comes to the class. Trend diamond plates. 
have, every time we've done this, have donated a, a diamond plate for every vet. Honewright, the guys that make the fluid that we use for sharpening, give us a bottle every time. Uh, Bessie has donated a bag of clamps for every vet. Jake, am I missing anybody? Numerous woodcraft stores have uh, stepped up, and actually now what we've asked them to do, and uh, they're doing it, uh, uh, actually give us or, or provide the finances to take care of one vet. Um, George and Everett down in Knoxville come to mind. Out in Seattle, they have done it as well. Uh, we've had help in the past from Florida stores, both in tennis in uh, Orlando and and uh, Tampa. Um, I don't want to forget anybody. Shoot, Portland. Mm. Did you mention Seattle? Seattle, I did. Yeah, okay. yeah. So your help is um, great, appreciated, and you get to participate. I can't wait for the first. Um, I can't wait for the first bridge brigade builder to be able to personally deliver that bench to that waiting vet. That is going to be awesome. So anyway, all right, done. Shall we build a little height? Um, height hello, everybody. Up. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Oh yeah. Oh already. oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, Frick. Well, no, Ken. Ken mentioned it in the chat, and uh, I've been getting quite a few. So thank yes, you. Yes, Frick is forty. Today, so, so Frick, you want to? No, they can see me. I have the Frick camera. Oh, okay. oh. I'm 35, oh. everybody. Oh, well. Uh, and Angie is here watching. He acts like he's 40. And? Angie, oh, Angie, oh. Is, oh. Angie, Angie is. Angie's on. Oh, because it's early. That's right. Angie, how are you? Keep us in line. Make sure if I'm doing something wrong, you tell me. Um, yeah. Jake's, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I got a couple things for you. Hope you're not in a hurry. So, we have been. <laughs> if you're in a, a hurry, that's this not is good. the wrong channel. That's not good. Yeah, this is the wrong program for you. Change the channel. We have been uh, bugging IBC for a long time for a quarter, an eighth of an inch chisel. Currently, now I'm going to show them to you. This is a, this is IBC chisels. They make a quarter. Theirs aren't as pretty. They make a th oh yeah. Well, Ahmed does these handles, and that's just a that that's a different world altogether. Quarter, three eighths, half. Five eighths, three quarter, and one inch. Wait, what's on that? What's on that five eighths? Oh, uh, that's uh, I borrowed that from Super Dave. That there be Vera wood. I got it with permission from Dave. So there's only one chisel missing, and that's on this end. There are times when none of these can get into the spot. You have to have an eighth inch, and IBC does not seem to be in any hurry to make one. So we have this guy named Wilford. Really, friend. Wil Wilford, who is a uh, retired fabricator, one of these guys that's got, uh, he, he gets around like he's 40, but he's really. He's 78. Is he 78? Are you mm -hmm. serious? Oh, my. Are you sure? I'm certain. Oh, wow. I know he's I'm 78. thoroughly impressed. And he's just, uh, he's just always looking for stuff to do. So he's here. And we make stuff for us all over the shop. And boy, what does he do a great job. By the way, he makes. So oh, I got a lot of things to tell you. The casters for benches that that we get from Woodcraft aren't heavy duty enough. They bend. So Wilford makes them, adds an uh, welds on another plate, to, just does a perfect job. He, what else did he make for us? Well, you, you did your router there. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and precise work too. Throat plate. So look at this. We put we tasked him with making us an eighth inch chisel. So what he did. He went in and he made us. So we're going to start selling quarter-inch chisels that are ground down so that you've got an inch and a half, an eighth inch. You've got your little flat landing. You've got your clearance on the sidewall, extremely precise. And he said when he grinds them, because we use, we use the new CBN wheel, the coarse wheel that we got, he said they don't even get hot enough. You can still hold them so you don't have to worry about the temper. Now, expect there's going to be a huge demand for these because we've been fielding calls for it for a long time. Jake says no, but I'm saying yes. Get in the queue. You can email me direct, rob at robcosman.com, if you want one of these chisels, and I'll make sure that you're in the queue, and you'll uh, you'll be the first. The handles, by the way, as I mentioned, Ahmed makes them. We're going to soon be able to offer those to you as well, and if you want to really bump your tool cabinet up, we'll hook you up with some of those. 
Anything else I'm supposed to tell them? We no, we're twenty. Wait. We're twenty minutes in, so you should. We're twenty minutes in. But yeah. you should. Uh, what are we? What What are we? Uh, what What's the prize tonight? Oh, we prize. So, Frick said we got to give a really special prize. So tonight. This is uh, Daniel's idea, actually. Oh, Daniel's idea. Or no, sorry, it's Charlie Ray's. Charlie Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie says we should give away a roll of toilet paper. But I said, oh yeah, but what about everybody else? So here's what we're gonna give away tonight. Can somebody grab me some videos? Or a video? Is that possible? So there have to be somebody out there. Help. So you know our wood hinge box, right? Uh, this is my business card versions made out of ebony and bird's eye. I used to sell these for $200 back when I had time to do that. Don't anymore, but there's one left. So this is going to be part of the prize. The wood hinge drill jig kit is going to be part of the surprise. The uh, rods for both eighth inch and quarter inch or pardon me, 8th inch and 16th inch are going to be part of the prize. Now, just so that you know, the little hinge, this uses a 16th inch rod. And Jake over here, I, I'm going to give you a quick update on this, but the wooden hinge on this big heavy lid, eh, a little bit too much for a 16th. So this uses an 8th inch rod. Now, we're also going to include the DVD on making the, uh, making the, the uh, wood hinge. And you don't even know about this yet. One each of these precise white uh, white side um, quarter uh, um, bull no not bull core nose box. core box bits. This is the quarter inch. This is the three eighths. This is the half. And these are oh, I'm sorry. Where's the three quarter? That's the half. That's the three. That's the three quarter. That's the half. That's the three eighths. So same thing that matches the uh, the drill jig. These will be on our site very soon. We got them. It's just a matter of working out the details. But somebody tonight is going to get all that. We're also going to give away three copies of the workbench video, which will enable you to build that bench. And something I'm forgetting. Oh, am I forget? Oh, uh, yeah. So something else, too. If you're interested in this, if this turns your crank, and you think, you know what, this is a lot of fun. And I just can't, I can't believe how many people think we're trying to Hoodwink, hoodwink them into something. We have an online workshop where we broadcast three 45-minute episodes each week. We've been doing this since 2011. All of those episodes are stored on there. And we walk you through the process, not to entertain you, but to educate you. So the idea is, I expect you to be able to build this based on the instruction. We have on the site are the uh, SketchUp plans for most of them. Some of them. Some of Don't them. Most. We're going to get more. And uh, you'll be able to go through and learn how to all do all this stuff. There's over, I'm, I know there's over 2,000. There could be as many as 22, 2,300 episodes already on there. I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you what we're currently working on in a moment. But here's the deal. We know you're sitting at home bored. Talk to people every day. By the way, if you buy something from me, I will call you and say thank you. You deserve it. And uh, a lot of people tell me, yeah, so glad for these videos and the shop to keep them, inter keep them occupied. So we thought, well, what can we do? Well, a membership, a full membership, which gives you the hand tool library, which is seven years of content, hand tool only, and the hybrid or the uh, online workshop, we call it now, which is a combination of both hand tools and power tools. We've switched that from three half hour episodes a week to three 45 minute episodes each week, barring a few weeks where we're teaching the vets. That's $325 a year. You can have it for a month for free. Go on there and just see if you like it. If you don't like it, no big deal. You're not being charged. If you like it and you want to stay, become a member. Support us. But you can have it. There's no strings attached. Trust me. How do they find it? They go to that YouTube video. All right. So we released a YouTube video that uh, Frick will put up there, hopefully. And you yep. go on there. And on that video, there's a link. And it'll take you right to it. And you can sign up and you can get a free month. And you don't have to sleep for the next month. You just stay up and watch videos all night long and day. So I'm, this is one of my most favorite projects. This is a standing desk that we've been working on for a while. I don't want to say how long, but you're getting to view all of it. And I just want to give you a quick update. So got the drawer fit. Now, the top, everything up here has already had its final finish, multiple coats. Down here has only had one coat, some none. That has to be redone. I'm just waiting for some decent weather because I spray outside. But they, we, we, we went through and fixed this 
so that it works perfectly. I haven't got it past here because we have to decide on the knob, and if I put it in there too tight, I'm not going to be able to get it out. We're working on this one. We're actually doing this one on YouTube just to entertain folks, show them how we do it, because if I don't, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, never get it done. It's going to look like that cabinet over there. Yeah, that cabinet over there missing a door. So you get your little one on the side. So the standing desk, the whole idea behind it is you're serving customers. Think of a lumber yard. And, uh, the, of course, all your stuff's in here. They're standing over there. So they're going to be signing their bill or whatever on this side. Most people are right-handed. That's why it's fit that way. But they have to be able to have a pen or a pencil, so that's why this little drawer. And then there's a top unit that's going to sit on here where your envelopes and stuff go. I got a great tip from someone just recently on how to uh, implement that. I got I to I gotta confess something here, but I'm going to do this first. So we put in the wood hinge, and look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? So the way we did these drawers, you can't, you can't see. There's a drawer there. You can't tell, but there is a drawer there. This one, this one, and this one. Isn't that neat? We'll show you how to do all that stuff. Make them so they blend right in. Now, come over here. This is sad. But you know what? Sad, but I don't care because the most fun I get is when you have a problem and then you got to solve it. And this is what happened. So we did this. You, you saw how well that, that other drawer fit. So we did this drawer. And I'm looking at it and I said, that, 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 that's not right. And I'm thinking, okay, well, it just hasn't oxidized. And every time I kept looking, I said, oh, what is wrong with that? Did I get that backwards? So I took it out. I turned it over like this. No, it didn't. And then Jake was in here and he's messing around like he does. I always find his problem. And he says, oh, wait a minute now. He turns it like that and puts it in there, and I said, oh, no. Somehow, I got this turned around. What am I going to do? I can't live with it. I just can't. So here's what we're going to do, and you'll see it all if you remember. You're even here on your trial. I have to take an eighth of an inch off of all of this. And I'm going to... I'm. Uh, I, well, I'm not telling you anymore. You'll have to watch to see. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to save it. And when I'm done, you will know. Be, you, and if I hadn't have told you, you wouldn't have known. Okay. Jake ready? How's our, uh, how, what are we up to, Frick? Viewers, <coughs> 441. Shall we do it now? No. No? We haven't done anything. What do you mean <laughs> we haven't done anything? We're, we're keeping them busy. Sure, but. So here's I'll how it works. Sorry, I've got to come back to this. Um, if you want to be in for the draw, just what do they do, Frick? So they just, uh, well, I have the link playing at the bottom corner of the, of the video all night long. So you just go to draw.robcosman.com, answer three simple questions, and then your name will automatically be added. And then uh, there's also a link on there uh, if you wish to donate to the Purple Heart Project. It'll take you right to the page. So you do not have to donate in order to have your name in the draw. We can't tie the two together. Um, however, if you would like to, if you would like to give back to these folks who have literally laid it on the line, we welcome your generosity and your support. It costs us approximately a little better than we got to update this figure: thirty-five hundred dollars U.S. per soldier we bring in. We do thirty-six a year. Do the math, and. Uh, we finance it through the sale of our saws. So if you buy a dovetail saw from us, 10% of the sale of the saw goes right to the Purple Heart program. We don't take out any fees of any sort. It just goes right to doing that. Um, Frick does barbecues all summer long that we raise money with. Big money we do, and, and these hopefully, hopefully this summer. And donations that we just get from folks, who, particularly guys who have been to the class who understand what's going on, they become very generous. So please do not donate through... YouTube. They take 30 some odd percent. Go on our site. There's a link on there, but it's on our site under the Purple Heart Project. How can you help? Pick your favorite wood and then multiply it by 10. Um, yes. So Let's go. We got everything done? All we're right. half an hour in. Quit telling me that. You're making it sound like they're not enjoying what we're talking about. Well, they are. They just. Well, we, we need to finish we this kind project. Of advertise no, we don't have to. Angie's, Angie's patient. <laughs> okay, so... There's how far we got so far, but we have to finish the rest of this before we can proceed, and we haven't done that side. These ones have all been cleaned out. Now, just to avoid confusion, I'm going to go through and clean this one out before we start, before we tackle that one. At some point, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to tell me, we're going to introduce Jake and have him, the other Jake, 
It was awkward when they both of them were in the same room. Now I'm going to use my fret saw. And just in case you're not familiar with this tool, um, the blade we use is a 12 and a half teeth per inch skip tooth blade. Skip tooth means that where there should be three teeth, there's only two. The gullet is the space, I know this is awful hard to see, is the space between the teeth. That's where the sawdust, and sawdust ends up going as the tooth is cutting through the wood. And until it gets out, out of the wood, the sawdust builds up in that space. And if it builds up to the point where you can't put any more in there, it stops cutting. So a skip tooth is going to cut faster because you have more capacity for spent sawdust. Uh, the throat is only three inches, which means on something like this, you'd be limited. So what we do, after I put the blade in, and it's always designed to cut on the pole, so the teeth are grabbing as I pull it this way. Teeth are clamped top and bottom. You uh, First you tighten up at the frame, and then you s turn this wing nut, which I've broken on mine, and that gives that blade nice and tight. And then I take a pair of pliers or uh, needle nose, and I grab the blade right here, and I give it about a 30-degree twist, the same thing up here. Now, when I make a horizontal cut, the frame actually stays up like that so that I'm not limited in the depth of the throat. So that also means that when you drop down here, you have to make sure that you bend it over to get it so that it's laying with the sides parallel to the kerf, and it'll fit down there. Go to the bottom, come up off the bottom, and then just... Cut away. A lot of people have difficulty controlling this, so I'll give you a few tips. Drop to the bottom. Get a sense of where horizontal is. Come up just a little bit. Now, if I turn the saw like that, it can't move until I start pulling on it, and then it'll just simply cut. Don't be in a rush. However, the closer you can saw to the bottom line, the less work you're going to have to do with the chisel. And since you're having to make the cut anyway, why not be more efficient? Which I'm not being too terribly efficient. Because I have a hard time seeing the line. I usually put a piece of tape on there, painter's tape. So tell me if there any if you're one of the vets that have been to our workshop as one of our one of our uh, scholarship vets, please say something about that in the comment section so that I can, uh, we can give you a shout out and say hello. What am I doing with this? Oh yeah, I didn't get, I need some more light. So my marking gauge, my marking gauge, <coughs> I didn't, I, I could have done that side with the marking gauge, did I? No. I need my I need my uh, extra eyes. So I believe this is still set. No, it's not. I'm going to set this back to where it was. And all I'm doing is having the cutter drop into the gauge line. Then I'll lock it. Now if I'm really careful... I'm going to put this in the vise and do it. If I'm really careful, I should be able to drag that across. Is Derek on? Ask Charlie if Derek's on tonight. Or Charlie, I'm asking you if Derek is on. So I'll say hello. Uh, where's that 17 degree? Now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to make a little cut right there. Now for some reason that is not in the same spot. How come? Son of a gun, I got that line down too far. 
Now what I got to do is go in here and get rid of some of that. I can't have a gap in that shoulder. And if you see what I did, that line doesn't, that line I just made doesn't line up with, with this baseline. So I'm going to have to take some material off of here. Try that again. Super Dave on? Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> what do we call him now? Super Dovetail Dave? Well, you could call him Chicken Dave, too. The chicken man. The chicken man. <laughs> Get my brother on here just <laughs> to do that one. So Dave uh, took his dovetail skills to a whole new level when he built a chicken coop for his wife and dovetailed all the uh, egg nest egg laying boxes. Now I want that standing plum. You know is Luther on? Sure is. Better be. He's answering the questions. Atta boy, Luther. You know, ever since um, So I, I have to uh, stop just one second. So Luther has a sister whose name is Alice. Alice, I believe, is 52. She has Down syndrome. And on Tuesday, Luther called me and said, oh, he said, my uh, daughter, my sister has just been taken to the hospital with a lot of symptoms. Later that night, he told me, he said she tested positive. Later that night, she was on a uh, ventilator. And the next morning, he said the doctors were surprised she's still alive. So I uh, started telling everybody that I knew to, that knows us. And there's a lot of people that have been praying for Alice, and she's still alive. This is Saturday, so uh, I think she's beating the odds. So if you are the praying type, and if you're not, start. Remember Alice, Sheely, in your prayers. Um, I can't imagine someone in her condition not being able to have anybody around her that she knows, tubes down your throat, scary ordeal. So, Luthy, everybody's pulling for Alice. All right, what are you going to say, Jake? Well, I was, I was going to give the reasoning for why Dave has become such a super dovetail. I, I'm turning this around because I want to address, I want to cut from the side that's going to be most visible. Now, tell the story of the... Uh, well, his wife's being his wife Michelle's being forced to work from home. And oh, so I thought you said forced to be around, <laughs> spend more time around him. No, and so now he's forced to make it look like he's actually busy every day when she's at work instead of just sitting on the couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fighting the couch for the dog. Well, that's what is, that's in Alaska. Okay, now this is a long cut. I'm actually going to switch, and I'm going to use my. This is a place where I'm going to use my crosscut saw. Now, if you want a nice, oh, no, I can't be, I can't be too over, over, but this is a great saw. And the reason I'm doing this is just because I want to, uh, yeah, it's the, I'm afraid that the rip saw, which is a dovetail saw, is going to have a tendency to want to wander like that. It doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't have anything on either side directing it. So if you were ever to look at a rip saw versus a crosscut, crosscut have these series of points the teeth point off to one side, so they actually hold the line really nicely. Very slow when it comes to uh, ripping, but very effective when it comes to cross-cutting. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to hold my line better with this. And true to the way we teach, I want it to come everything to come right from the saw. I don't want to have to go in and make corrections with a chisel after the fact. Yeah, I got chicken. I got chicken, and I I drifted off. Well, at least that's better than drifting in. So now what I've got to do is go in here and just well, you can see it right here if you had my eyes. You can see the. Uh, I 
and you improve that edge. If you want to catch this soft, soft pine, you've got to have they a good edge. They can see the remnants. Can they? Yeah. You can get in that tight? Yeah. Any questions? Am I talking to myself? How no. are our numbers? 533. When's, J when's Jake coming on? Whenever you make a little bit of progress here. Oh, you guys are nasty. <laughs> Kirk's old now, and he's getting cranky. Yeah, that's right. Crotchety. He's become a curmudgeon. <laughs> How's it feel to be 40, Frick? 35. You feel like you were near 35? A little bit. It's a good thing you married a young wife. True. She's only two years younger than me. But Such an uh, awesome father. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just you tooting your own horn. Somebody has to. I think you lucked out, really. We wouldn't be live right now without me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, change the subject. All right, now, sit right here and go in there. Now, I'm looking at this and wondering what is going on here because it doesn't look square. Is Barb on? I think we forgot to tell her. No, I don't see Barb. If you uh, if you are have plans to build the bench for yourself anytime soon, we had quite a run on it. It was a very successful launch. Even surprised Luther. And as a result, we are almost out of vices. What did you say we have left, Jake? Six. So there are six vices left. They are made in Sweden. I cannot give you a date when we will have more, Just trying as we are. Same with bench dogs. Bench dogs are out. We're trying to get more. Okay, now, here's where I can't use, I can't use my marking gauge. I can't get down to that line. Uh, you know what I could do? You know what I could do? I'm going to try something. I wonder if I was to cut a bit off right up here, which would eliminate that. Oh, look at that, Jake. I can do it. What's the matter? Your mic not working? Just tap it. There we go. This stuff is so soft that uh, any pressure in the wrong spot. And it has a tendency to crush. Now, I can't really get... I've got to have some kind of a ledge to start on. I don't want to be starting on the side of a hill. So I'm going to go in here and just take the top off. And see if I can't... Can. See if I can, yeah. Your saw's tilted. You're, you're tilting this way. There you go. Ah, come on, hold. I don't have a whole lot of material there to that deal with. That was so with. little, you probably could have chiseled it. Remember, I'm looking for opportunities to extol the virtues of that chis that saw. High five, Luther. If you're looking for an excuse to buy something, get Jake to make you some 17 degrees, especially in the IBC. They're well worth having. 
particularly when it comes to dealing with soft woods like this that don't I respond out, well. I pumped out a dozen of them the other day. Okay, now, <clears throat> people often say, oh, pine, pine. They downplay pine. Let me tell you something about it. It's what we typically start our students with, and the reason is you have to be so careful, so careful, the slightest mishandling, and uh, I'm looking for a backup, a slightest mishandling, and you're going to wreck, you're going to leave a, a huge oh, dent. Oh, hey, right down there. What? I got a piece right there. Oh, okay. That's the bottom for the other drawer. For the what? That piece in the corner is no, the bottom for the other drawer. No, I was talking about that other piece of pine that was the... Well, that, I want to be able to save that piece. for the drawer. For the little drawer. Oh. So, you, you just have to handle it. What is that? Very carefully. You know, it's got resin on it, so it picks up dust. Now... That's going to require a quarter. And I don't have to hit very hard, so I'm going to use my small mallet. Irritating it when it doesn't sit flat. Good idea when you're doing this is to go down about a third of the distance when you start chopping on the inside. Look who's on. Huh? Rita Meyer is on. Oh, Rita is? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Rita. Rita r runs Heartland Forest. And she made our experience there second to none, except for the night that she made me be the one to call Dan at 2 in the morning and tell him that the wind had blown over his tent. Got to get you back for that one, Rita. If you have ever heard me talk about Marvelous Mike DeJuli. I met him at Heartland Forest, and he's made a big impact on a lot of the folks that have come to our workshop, the vets in particular, but not just. Okay. Now, I've, I left a little bit too much material. Oh, I was going to tell you. So here's the reason why. The fibers have a tendency to crush. Now, the 17 degree will leave a pretty clean spot in between. But the fibers have a, t have a tendency to crush. So the farther you chop from the inside, the closer that fa fracturing is going to be to the surface out here. This is the part you're going to see. You start planing this down. If you have to go deeper than you anticipate, maybe to get rid of a gauge line, you start to expose where those broken fibers came out and it ruins your joint. So if you go... If you do it this way, particularly on pine, if you go one-third from this side, two-thirds from this side, you'll be in about that deep before that last piece breaks. Now, this is only really an issue on thinner stock, though. No, this is, a, this is an issue on... I would say this is species... species however you Specific? say it. Yes. Tends not to happen with the harder woods, but the lighter woods that fracture easily. That Rex. Since you guys are meeting the family, oh, they met. They met. This is Rex, my uh, oldest son, who's home from Halifax. His job's been put on hold temporarily because Currently, of the virus. Currently, there has virus. become a uniform requirement. Yeah, oh, I forgot to mention that. So, uh, Derek is here, just so you know. Hi, Derek. He's not on the chat, but he is listening. That's awesome. He's, uh, he's with, uh, or he's teamed up with 
Ray Charles. Pardon? Charlie Ray. <laughs> Ray Charles, you said? Yeah. Charlie, so I'm not I'm not worried. Um, T-shirts. So if you, in case you're not aware, if you look up here, we have two different ones. Our T-shirts help to promote our cause. It's uh, it's easy to sometimes easy for easier for people to answer questions than just to bring up the topic. So on the back it says wood doing good. The other one says wood is good, and we've got a third one coming. And on the front is our logo of the Purple Heart Project. And the only way this is going to be effective, and I, I mean it from a perspective of finding the people who need it, is telling everybody, and sooner or later somebody will hear it and say, you know what, I got a brother, a nephew, a cousin, a niece, a sister who suffers from this as a result of military service. I got to tell her about it. That's how we find most of them. We have not had any kind of help from any other organization, so... It's a grassroots. We've had a suggestion to make the next color like the army green. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We, uh, mm. what, Jake? No. I, I'm, I'm ready for, uh, when we get this cleaned out, we bring Jake on? Sure. I'm anxious. Everybody is. All right, I, I'm sadly depending more on these visors than I should. Okay, I'm working from the front, always from the front. I'm going to get in there. I'm controlling my chisel with my left hand, and my left hand is braced against the front of the board, so I can yeah. push what? We should point out how clean those sockets are. Are you wanting to grind more chisels? I don't mind, but... Well, this is the big, if you look in there, what Jake's talking about, this is the advantage of a 17 degree because it allows the chisel tip to penetrate the wood without putting excess pressure on the fiber, crushing the ones below it, which is typically what happens. So you're able to go in there and just slice this stuff beautifully. As Danny would say, like butter. Oh, that would be Danny Bell. Danny on? Uh, I haven't seen him actually, but I haven't been monitoring the chat that much. Who is? Luther is. We should have Luther. Luther should be on audio. We're missing half our staff, remember. Right. Well, Ken's on. Isn't Ken on? Ken's on, but he's usually here monitoring the chat. That's his job, him and Megan. I'm just in here cleaning up these corners. You, you have to have sharp corners. If not, you'll damage the corners of your pins when you put it together, and then you end up with fillets instead of nice sharp corners. Jake, we offer the 17 degree in both the Wood River chisel. Mm -mm. No? Oh, no, no, we can't got to have the steel of the IBC in order to hold up at that angle. You can't use them on hardwood. They're only for soft woods or soft woods, not necessarily coniferous. Okay. Now, is he on, ready to go? Uh, no. So, Jake Tirola came to us in uh, spring of last year. He was in our first class that we taught here second class that we taught here. And uh, Jake had a very touching story. I don't know how much of it he wants to share with you, but somehow the word hockey came up, and he says, well, I play. I said, okay, good, you're on. So we got him gear, and he came out twice with us during the week. And he was a good goal for an American. He's a good hockey player. Actually, he, was, he could even pass for a Canadian. Anyway, great guy. And he's continued. He's done a lot of work. He built his own bench. And uh, I'm going to have him introduce... Am I going to be able to hear him? No. Do you want to come over? Yes, I do. Frank, which cam are we going to? Is he talking? Yeah. <coughs> Frank? What? Which cam are we going to? You guys to? hear me? Oh, it'll be on the screen. There he is. Uh, Good shirt. Jake, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Frank. 
Can you hear me all right? Jake, one more time. Can you hear me? Yep, perfect. Just give me one sec. I'll uh, give the headphones to Rob here. Did I just have him go ahead? Yeah. Jake, so you're on. Yep. Can't hear him. They can't hear me. Not at all. Jake, just a second. Uh, I can hear you, but a apparently they can't. So just give me one second. They went that far without him hearing. Yeah. Give me one second. No, it's not. It's not you, Jake. Just give me one second here. I don't know why. Let me go back here. when we tested this morning. Oh wait, I think I know. Just give me one second. Say something there. Why it's not picking that up? It did when we did our test. <laughs> go shut the go shut the heat off. On the switch on the wall. Just turn the temperature down so it shuts off. Okay, um, Jake, I'm gonna call you back from Rob's phone. We're gonna have to do it the the old-fashioned way. Sorry about that. We'll call you back in a second. Um, I think we could still use that email address, actually. All right. All right. We'll call you back. I'll get him. Just continue for a second. Yeah. You're going to take a minute? Yeah. All right. So they never heard any of that? Sorry. We were doing so well. At yeah. Least we, at least we didn't lose the connection. All right, we'll get set I'll up. Call you back, Jake. Just one sec. As soon as we get him back on the line. Technology. It always works when we test it, and then. That's we why I do wood. <laughs> Never fails me, <coughs> except when I turn things around the wrong way. Get that flush. Set that back. We referenced off the front, Jake. I think we did. Yeah. Oh. We must have. Although I would have thought we did the other side. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that we I'm did. I'm pretty this sure way. we referenced over here. Well, if the pieces are the same width, it won't make a difference. So. They they are the same width. The, although I've changed them now, 
but I changed it after. Yeah. I remember I took the w I took mm -hmm. the thickness of this down or the width of that because of the screw up I did. Now this is already set. Shoot. It would have been set from last week too, but I'm going to go reset it just in case. I always like to hear that drop so I know it's touching. That's why I like to do it on a metal. Put this in place. Make sure there's no debris in there that's going to prevent that from registering. Yeah, I'm going to grab my dovetail marking knife. Is that what Luther was calling to say he couldn't hear? Probably. I'm ready to go whenever you are. Are you? Let's go right now. We're hot for this. Am I going to be able to hear without? Yeah, you're going to. Okay. Oh. Jake, I hate to do it. I hate to do this to you, but I need nice. you to start over. They didn't hear anything. Frick, what do I need to hear? Can you hear me, Frick? Yeah, you should probably focus can on Can we me. just, before he starts talking, can we get a check from somebody online hey. to make sure? Call me. Are you already got me set up or what? Yeah, Jake, we got you. Uh, All right. Does that sound any better? Yeah, it does. So All right. So you, where, you want me to start from the beginning again? Yeah, please. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, okay, so I was I was in the Army. Uh, I was a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division. Um, I did three tours. Um, and I was kind of like hitting the, uh, getting struck by lightning twice. I was stop lost, and then I was recalled. Um, so when it was time for me to get out of the Army, I wanted nothing to do with the Army anymore. Um, I, I wasn't physically wounded. Um, so I thought I was fine, no issues, got out, and a little while later, it, it kind of hit me like a freight train, um, it started realizing I have some, some, uh, mental issues, PTSD, TBI, um, and I, I think that's a, why a lot of guys, a lot of the, uh, veterans today are turning to suicide is because they don't know how to deal with what's happening to them, um, so a lot of them turn to drugs, or alcohol, and eventually suicide. So, um, I, I stumbled across the PHP, and I got to, when I got to Rob, I, it, what the biggest thing it did for me is it gave me an off switch. That's that's the best way I can describe it. It Doing hand tool woodworking, doing woodworking is, it's it gives me the ability to, to, Think about whatever comes to my mind, and then I can shut it off by going to work with Wood and uh, using the tools that he that they've given me. Um, I guess that's that's the the biggest thing, and that's I think that's true with a lot of the guys that went through the program. Is it it for lack of a better term, it, it gives you an off switch that that you can con control and that is constructive, and so, uh, you're not dealing with suicide, alcohol, or drugs. Um, the civilians in the class, like Rob has said many times before, if it was all vets, it wouldn't work. There's there's something about having half and half, um, you know, six guys, there are civilians and six vets uh, with a common interest of woodworking, um, and it just it just works. And if, if you have even the slightest inclination to, to sign up for the class, I sign up for it if you're a civilian. If you're a vet, don't try to make the decision whether you're going to be accepted or not, just put your put your uh, your application in and see what happens I, I actually wasn't supposed to be uh, Luther X told me to uh, reapply for the fall and I got a call last minute um, and I talked to my wife she said just say yes we'll figure it out so that's how I ended up there in uh, last spring and how are your dovetails uh Pretty good. I actually have a, a little an array set up. Just just happen to have those there. Just just happen to have these, you know, ready to go. Show us your. I built the bench. Show us your What's bench that? too. I gotta try to. I work in a huge workshop, but I built Rob's bench before the video came out. Um. My, my, my shop is my mechanical room, and it's uh, it's uh, 12 by 15. 
So you don't need a lot of space for it. And I did everything. I mean, it, try to model it exactly after the class was. So Right down to the tool tray. Right down to the tool tray, yep. So give us a good close up of your Jake's an excellent craftsman. He did he did awesome work. I we have evidence of it here. So this is cherry and aspen. And then I buy. So how many dovetails had you cut before you came to the class? Zero. These these small ones are, are little buggers. They're they're a lot of fun though. that in oak? Oak and cherry. Yeah, the scraps that I had. Yeah. Excellent work. Thanks. You snatched the pebble, grasshopper. What's that? You snatched the pebble, grasshopper. You're too, you're too young for that. <laughs> Jake, thank you. It was great having you in the class. You were uh, you were you really brought a lot to it. I don't even think you realize that, but and we've been in touch a lot since. Plan to continue. Yeah. We will see you again. Yeah, that would, uh, I'd love it. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thank you for everything you do, guys. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Jake. Okay. Frick, we're going to get that figured out someday where it's nice and smooth? Sure. All right. Hopefully. Okay, so here we go. Cutter on top, move the gauge over to it. I wonder why that's just a little bit higher. Okay, now we offset to my left, so we're going to go to the right of each tail, reach down, drag that through. I'm being careful so as not to tear out any fibers on this side. The more times you do this, the deeper the cut, the easier it is to start and to keep your saw plumb. Big advantage. One of the reasons why it's so critical that this saw cut on the tailboard that I'm running through be perpendicular across the end. If it's perpendicular here, that means it's plumb going down. And that's what's going to start your saw. Did we uh, did we use that technique, Jake, on the last one? Do you remember the contortion? Yeah. No. We didn't. Should we do it this mm. time? No. I want to keep that over tight. Should you be on this side? At least part of the time, they're getting a, they're getting a view that's not my bur my view. And if they're wanna, wanting to be in my position, they should be over here looking over my shoulder. Try it. Okay, this time we're up underneath. Move it over carefully. Uh, I don't like slamming. There, nice and tight. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm offset to my right, so I'm going to go to the left side. Now, I'm being careful because the grain is running off like this, and I don't want to be pulling fibers off of the face of the pin. You'll look over here how the fiber came off, off that way, but that's waste. It's being removed. But now on this side, it's not going to be. It's going to actually be the part we're keeping, so... How's our time, Frick? We're at an hour and ten minutes. Okay, watch it. We have to, we have to, we can't go two hours tonight. Almost, but not quite. What's attendance? Mid 500s. How many? Mid 500s. Don't forget our cause. Doesn't take a lot. If everybody just contributes a little. Oh, 
Oh, this is the one that I screwed up on. Remember, I went in, I started, and I had to recorrect. So now I, what I'm going to do is I got to make sure I'm careful to hold the knife tight to that side of the tail and not let it drift over here in that larger kerf area that was caused by my poor craftsmanship. All right, there we are. Now, get my pencil. Uh, get my Angie pen. This is my Angie pen. Mark my waist. I've numerous times said it takes less time to mark your waist than it does to screw up and have to start over, so mark your waist. Now, I can use my dovetail marker for this. Turned on its side. You know, I got to get rid of this. <coughs> Oftentimes, this burr that gets created from the knife gets in the way, so just get rid of that before you come in and drop your perpendiculars. Dovetail saws are on. No, dovetail markers are on sale this month. How do you know? I'm part of the marketing campaign. Oh, but the uh, when did that go out? Today. Oh, it did. The newsletter went out today. Yeah. And you guys are so efficient. I had to switch because my pen wasn't working. Now, when I do this, I try to remember to start from the bottom and come up for the simple reason that it is easier to start at the line and come up than it is to stop at the line. Now, you say, well, what's the problem with going below the line? Well, you're training yourself through the entire process to follow the line with your saw. So if you do that and then inadvertently follow the line past the, past the gauge line, now you're in trouble. Now I'm going to put a piece of tape on there as you normally see me do simply because the, I purposely made a very faint line. Power donations tonight, Frick. You paying attention to that? Nope. That's Megan's job. You what? That's Megan's job. Is Megan on? She is. Hi, Megan. Megan's in Utah visiting her uh, family. Okay. She didn't want to be quarantined with Jake. Yeah. That's what unlike, I unlike poor Michelle, Super Dave's wife. Right down to the gauge line. No, I, I haven't. I haven't asked a question yet. You haven't been asked. I haven't been asked a question yet. Right. I haven't answered a question. Is what I meant to say. Luther's all over it. He's being too efficient. Yeah. Well, that's no fun. I'll I'll take the next one. Now, if I look, no, it isn't. I can't blame that. I may have to come back and make a few adjustments on these. Is Jeff Smoked on? the wrong way. Jeff O'Connor on? 
Uh, I can't. No, I don't think so. All right, I have a question from Rendon. He said, Rob's always using different saws. Is that because he's testing them? What do you mean different saws? I you don't must think that you're, because you're switching between. Crosscut and, uh, and dovetail? Yeah. Different, different tooth configuration, different, different job. Now, I'm going in and just fixing the side of a couple of these where I me, let me zoom in close on this. If you look really close, I'm a little bit away from my line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my saw in here. I'm going to twist it this way so I can just go down the side of that tail. Now you should explain that that, that can be repaired. This, the opposite this can't. one can re be repaired. The opposite can't, just like Jake said. Meaning, if I had cut into the pin, I got to live with it, like I may have done over there. I'll just blame it on getting old. All right, fret saw time. Kirk can start doing that now too. I can. Oh, he can. He's forty. He's you uh, what day is that seniors discount now for? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You'd be able to go do your grocery shopping before anybody else. That's right. Which I hear is not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> well, Ken told me. So they've got it so that you have to, you're in single file going down the lanes. He said, you get some guy in front of you who has to stop and read all the labels. Are you talking about Costco? No, he's in Sobeys. Oh. Well, I know since I work at Costco that our seniors' hours are actually uh, much busier than, than our regular. So it kind of defeats the purpose sometimes. What's the age for the seniors hour? So a year and a half and I can go. Whoopee. Can't wait. Remember to swing around because your opening is wider at the front than it is at the back. So Luther says you missed a, a good opportunity there to really explain the difference between the saws and, and promote them, if you will. Well, what Luther may have missed is that I already did that tonight. <laughs> but I will again. Crosscut saws do a superior job at cross-cutting, and rip saws do a superior job cutting parallel to the grain. So, you need a matched pair. You know what you should do? Dovetail, cross-cut. What? Do that demonstration where you take a piece of wood and you use a chisel. You really? You want me to do that yeah. instead of doing this? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You marketers. Okay. Here's what they want me to show you. If I, I take... I showed Dave, Super Dave, Super Dave, I showed him this, and his jaw was on the floor for the next half hour. Laughing or thinking? He said, it was, he said yeah. it was life changing. Oh, yeah. Well, well. <laughs> all right. So here's what we're going to do we're going to demonstrate the difference between a cross cut saw and a rip. It's a dramatic e example in case you don't have a cross cut. By the way, we this is our number one selling tool, our dovetail saw. And our cross cut saw, which I personally think is a better cross cut saw than anything else out there. By a higher by a higher by margin. a higher margin than our dovetail saw is better, but people have not been exposed to it. So I'm going to take this 8 inch chisel, which will may do an even neater job, and I'm going to show you what happens 
when you use, so a dovetail saw has a rip tooth, as does a medium tenon or a tenon saw. Okay. The tooth looks like a bunch, if you were to look down the line, you'd see a bunch of chisels. The, the tooth is flat across the top. So when you uh, cut. And they're, and they're each offset, right? Yeah, slightly. When you cut with them parallel to the grain, each tooth knocks out a piece of wood, and you end up with a nice, neat kerf. Use it across the grain. I'm going to go over here on this one. Use it across the grain where it's not the best suited, and look what happens. You get a mess. Okay? So the crosscut saw, instead of having teeth that are flat across the top, they have three-sided teeth that are pointed. And each one of these points, one points this way, the next one points that way. This way, that way, this way. So the crosscut teeth come in. Well, show them that shape. Okay, so that's one, two, three-sided. Okay, that knife. See. One, two, three. Can you imagine teeth yeah. like this? So what they do is they come in and they make, they score the wood like that on one side. Then, i to turn this around, do it this way. And then they score the wood like that on the other side. They're cutting across the fiber. And then they clean out the material in between. Kind of like the way the rip saw does. Now, I went over too far, but had I not touched that, you'd end up with a nice clean shoulder. So that's the reason why you want two different saws. So number one saw to buy is a dovetail. You're probably going to use it more than you use a crosscut. But number two, a close second, would be your crosscut saw. Why do I say this? Well, it just it makes it makes the work easier, and the, it improves the performance, which is ultimately going to make you happier because you don't have to go back and fix a bunch of mistakes that were equipment issues that didn't need to happen in the first place. Okay, remember, I'm coming in from the back side, so I'm only going to go down about a third of the way. And I mentioned this last time, I'm going to mention it again. I, I chop right up tight to the pin on that side, right up tight to the pin on that side, and then take this center section out using the middle of the chisel. And you remember, now there's too much material here, so I'm going in, I'm going to relieve some of that waste that would otherwise build up and push on the bevel side of the chisel, forcing the chisel back like this and breach my line. Don't want that. Now, how much is too much? Well, if you can see that, Jake's up close. That was too much. And why I always go into each corner first is to prevent that chisel from twisting as a result of more pressure on one end than the other, or one side. Let's see if I, I, I did this last time, but I'll do it again in case we have people that uh, didn't see it before. If I were to go over here, chop there, then chop there. When I go to chop this bit right here, there's nothing putting pressure on this side of the chisel. There's only pressure being applied on this side of the chisel. When I say pressure, I mean waste, putting pressure on the bevel, pushing the chisel that way. So the uneven pressure is twisting it like that, and sometimes it'll twist it in, and you'll end up getting a little undercut in here, and you don't want that. So if you do it the way I just showed you, it won't happen. Particularly with pine, make sure there's no debris Underneath, you don't want bruises in your wood. Okay, now what I'm going to do is remove some of that. Then I'm going to get right in here tight to the corner. Start and then lean forward 
so that I can follow. I'm going to go down here and do the whole line. I'm going to so, give a, we're just going to give a shout out to Otto. He's a, an infectious disease worker in Calgary. And uh, he's using this video to, during his break, Otto. Right, right now. So uh, just to calm him down, he says, front line. <laughs> deal with the chaos. Thank you, Otto. Appreciate what you do. Honestly, I have three daughters that live in Calgary and a grandson. Jake, film from over in this side, please. I want to show them what I'm talking about. So I'll get rid of the excess first. Watch how I do this. I start in the corner. First one registers it. Then I lean it forward. So I follow that face. If I do it successfully, I can completely eliminate what would be another step. Now I'm looking at this grain and it's really going off like that and it's 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 making the uh, making the situation a little more difficult in that it makes these corners of these pins really fragile. Rex, do you need me for something? And now we're in this corner. And then we'll take our center section out using the middle of the chisel so that one corner doesn't have a tendency to dig in. Or Too much material there. Another little tip for you is when you're doing this, it's uh, really easy to have the chisel bounce on you. You start pounding on it. It bounces, it comes up, and then comes back down somewhere where you don't want it. So I find it beneficial to keep some pressure, downward pressure with my left hand, so that I have lots of control, and that can't happen. And remember again, if you're working with pine, it can be so fragile and mark so easy. Okay, let's put this in the vise. Remove this. How did they like my demo on the... Uh, they really liked it. Really? Some yeah. comments? That's that's the kind of stuff they... They come here. The, re the reason they're here, yeah. Yeah? That's what they said. A couple of them. Wow. Look, if our very own super... Why am I doing this then? <laughs> Fill I'll time. Just, I'll just do uh, tool demonstrations. Explanation. What did you say about Super Dave? Well, our very own Super Dave was amazed by it. He was just making it feel good, Jake. He already knew all that stuff. I think he got teary-eyed at one point. <laughs> Hold it together, Soup. Do you put a micro bevel on the 17 degree? A mic yes, always. It's the easiest way to sharpen. But I keep it low. I don't do much. Um, kind of defeats the purpose. It's required that you put a micro bevel on it. I've had a customer buy the chisel and without sharpening it, he went to use it and the edge folded. Well, that micro bevel would, would toughen it up a little bit and I'm just going well, back it's not in. that, but it, would, it, would sh it sharpens it so it it's cutting instead of pushing. I'm just going in here to check because I don't think it did this on this particular piece. How tall is the bench? 38? No, no, so not. This one I'm working at is 36, I think. 36 and a half. Now, I'm going to, I use these a lot, and somebody asked me today. These are, somebody asked me the brand, Man. Optivisor. Who did? I don't know. And I use, I have two of them. They're not that expensive. 
This one I have a number five diopter in it, and this is a number three. And the number three I seem to like better. Can't uh, tell you why. I think it's uh, where the focal point is. Lee Nielsen sells them. Yeah, but if you're uh, if you're as old as Frick, you probably ought to get yourself a pair. Or LASIK, like I did. Oh yeah. Okay. This piece is done. I will process this tailboard. Now, before I go any further, I got to go back in and do another little promo. So, our what we're giving away? How many people have applied for, or how many people have put their name in the hat? For the draw, we currently have. 339. Okay, so tonight's giveaway, we're going to give away three copies of the Cosman Workbench, new release, four DVD and a half hours, four and a half hours of nothing but pure instruction. It includes a cutting list and two-dimensional plans. That will be prize number one, two, and three. Prize number four, the grand prize, will be one of my wood hinged boxes, business card boxes. The DVD on how to build it, including how to make the dowel and all the rest of it. The wood hinged jig that makes that you can use quarter inch, three eighths, half, and three quarter. The do the rod, the the rod. It's only one pack. I don't know. One what pack of sixteenth. Oh, what? It's that. It's the pack on the right. It's only one pack. What? You put both in there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So a pack of rods. So you can do either one. And four. And the what, the reason we went with these because they have to be precise. In fact, I want to show you that. Do we have it here, Jake? Mm mm. Ah, crap. When you when you use these when you're looking for router bits to do that wood hinge, it has to be half round. So when you set the dowel in there, it makes contact all the way around. Else you're not going to get very good glue surface. And I've never had one fail. So this is the quarter inch, three eighths, half, and three quarter. All with quarter inch shank, since most people have quarter inch shank routers, not half. And if you have a half, you can just buy an adapter. So if you want your name in the draw, just make sure you go on and do whatever Frick said. And don't forget a purple heart. Don't forget to get a t-shirt, a blue one and a turquoise one. That teal, that was Angie's color. So that you can help promote our cause. And, and if you're feeling up to it and you want to participate and you want to give back to these guys, donate to the Purple Heart Project and help us be able to provide this for 36 combat wounded vets every year. Uh, I don't want to say anything about this year because I don't want to jinx it, but we have moved our May class. We had to move to the end of August. We're still holding fast on June, July, August, August twice, September and October. And we still have spots left, two spots in the, in the October class and two in the uh, late August. Dates for the late 24 August? 24 to 29. 24 to 29. Okay. Questions, Frick? I've had one. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm not working. Can't see. I'm going to bring that up a little higher so that I can see it. Oh, I, I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. Knew there was something missing. Rick? Yeah. Nothing. Can you make the wooden hinge box without a router? Well, mm. I've I've uh, been asked that numerous times. I haven't tried it yet. Although, if I ever get caught up in inventory, I'm going to try it. How it would, would you? Do it would be it way? would be a challenge. Well. Because just um, where all our beating planes, Jake? They're in that drawer somewhere. No, they're not in that drawer. No, I mean that drawer. The are they, are they here? Oh, they might be down back. Yeah, they are right here. So there was a time back when Frick was young. <laughs> last week. That oh. every router bit... Every router bit, bit would have been a plane. So that cuts a little bead, and the opposite would cut a cove. Well, if you can cut 
any shape, you can cut a half round. And uh, so I think we can do it. And I think it would be fun to try. So the answer is yes, I haven't done it, but theoretically it should be possible. Now let's go in there and do a bang up job. If you're uh, not subscribed to our newsletter, the Colonel puts a ton of work into that, and for your benefit, it's not a sales newsletter, it's a content newsletter. So every month there's a theme. What's this month? I should know, I just did the video. Oh, cutting, laying, uh, dovetail, dovetail geometry, we'll call it. How do you get nice looking dovetails? What things do you take into account when you're laying them out for proportions? So there's a, two videos on it, and then Luther will have an article on it. And, and then this we always. Just has two videos. Huh? It's just two. No written article on this one? Just two videos? It's two, are, it's two topics. Two topics? So it's either two videos oh, or a video. All right. And, and we advertise product. one product in each one. And you can go back and look at all the previous ones discount. to see. What you want? We discount that product. And we discount that product. I'm starting to sound like a parrot. So go on our. Hey, do, do we have that thing where you just text that number? Yeah, but Luther will have to handle that. All right, Luther, handle that, would you please? And the other thing I want to tell you is go on to our YouTube channel, if you're not, or you're there now, and subscribe. And then hit the notification thing so. You'll know. We're, we've been to kind of do something to help with all this isolation we're dealing with. Jake and I are filming a YouTube video every day and uh, putting it out there. In fact, we filmed tomorrow's today. Yeah, we did because we don't work on Sunday, but we did have a we do have a video for you. So our good friend uh, Abraham Pinsky, he's a regular here. It's yeah. a Abraham, right? Abraham. Uh, Abraham. He wants to know why a chisel needs three bevels instead of just two. Why can't the second be the micro bevel? Well, Abraham. That's a, that's not a chisel question, though. That's a sharpening question. Because it, it so applies to it, both So it all has to do with just speed. If I come in here... And I create a secondary bevel. And we're doing a freehand, remember? There's my, there's my primary bevel, which happens to be 17 degrees. So I've got to come up off of that. Why do I have to come up off of that? Because I don't want to polish all of this. The only part that does anything is out here. So as long as I get up off of that primary bevel, I'm going to create a secondary. And when I come over here, I either have to get that exact same bevel and polish down through all of the one, or in this case, 500 grit scratches, replacing them with 16,000. That may not, like, may not sound like a big deal, but this is a very slow cutting stone. The option is, instead of trying to A, almost do the impossible, which is match that exact same bevel, if I come up just a little bit higher, then I'm only dealing with the actual leading edge. And all I have to do, and this is the best example, look at this saw. There's Imagine that being the end of my chisel. There's my 1,000 grit, 500 grit scratches created by the 500 grit abrasive particles on the stone. Now, if I set that on there and I raise it up higher than the previous, previous uh, stone, then all I have to do is just get rid of those and replace them with much smaller scratches, in this case, 16,000 grit. But instead of having to do the whole surface, I just do the very edge of the blade, which results in just the little tips of that cutting edge. So to answer your, summarize that for speed. Makes it really, really fast and really, really accurate. Can't imagine trying to go in and actually duplicate that uh, exact same bevel. It would be impossible. It would just be a hit or miss. Lucky if you got it. Don't have to worry about it with the, with the tertiary bevel.
Now I'm going to adjust this because it has to be the same as. Can we give them a quick shot of what's going on out here? They like to meet the family. They they love it when I do this. I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh no, that's not a. Oh, I get shot. <laughs> Never put your wife on camera without warning and a good place to hide. Awfully loud out there. There. And if you want to know what they're doing, you guys have bought up so many of those awesome screws that we are on our second pallet in um, less than a month. Oh, speaking of that, grab that screwdriver. Oh, yeah. Well, I got something new to show you, too. So they're on their second pallet, and they have to, the kids do it. Think of that when you're using those screws. Poor little Chloe and her working her Dainty little fingers, fingers right to the bone, packaging them. She's got a great hourly rate, though. Yes, we pay her $12 an hour once a week. How does she get more than me? She's worth more, Frick. You get old age pension. Yours <laughs> yeah. is subsidized. Okay, let me stop and show you this. So uh, people have been looking for a screwdriver. And I have these that I, uh, I've, I've loved. Oh, Jake hid them. No. Nope. There they are. You hid them. And I like them because they uh, good grip, but we weren't able to find them. So we've had five, how many different brands? Five additional, but I five have a, I have a collection of eight. So this is what we have settled on. You need to read the story on the Robertson screw. But this is the original, read that, the original Robertson. And it's got great grip and... No, that's the number six. Grab number eight. What's the difference besides the shank size? When that goes on there, it doesn't come off. And you can go in there and start it, and it doesn't twist and fall. Le electricians, as I always say, love it because when you're having to put a box on the wall or against on the stud, and you've got to reach in the back in order to put it on, and this thing will hold. I've had him grip so bad I had to leave the screwdriver there. Came back for it later. Okay. They will be, Jake, if we show stuff like that, we have to tell them. When? One month. One month. One month we will have those. And we'll have them in, uh, so they come, in case you're just new to this, Robertsons have um, four sizes. They have zero. Which is yellow. Yellow. One, green. Two, red. And three, black. And they, there's a little scale on the size of screw. Now, when I say size, I mean the shank size that it uh, works with. But they all have that same characteristic and just pleasure to use. Not as fun as dovetails, but they are good. Careful. See how we did? Oh, this is clean, nice and clean. Look at that. Nothing to do other than to go in there and just get rid of that little bit of material. So that's what we want. We want to make a cut that's, that literally splits that gauge line. I did it. I'm going I'm to finish off with this, and then we're going to do our, our draw. Do you need to cut that? What? I need to cut it in order to reach down and get that second gauge line. No, I mean, do you need to even cut it or can you just chisel that off? Well, I like cutting it. Yeah. Talk to him, Luther. Fun fact, we have 26 people watching with the first name Dave. <laughs> wow. But how many have Super Dave as a name? Looks like just one. There is only one.
Okay. Now I'm going to go across the top. I hope you're seeing that you're getting that nice and tight because oh, yeah. that is just an absolute pleasure to use when this is sharp like that. Oh boy, do I like that. Paul Morrison commented that the uh, camera work this evening is spot on. And Paul, down see, in Aussie see, land. Paul, that's why you're my favorite. <laughs> Unlike Dave. You're sucking up, Paul. Dave's probably criticizing right now. Dave said he could see your head starting to swell. <laughs> so these are all interesting personalities from our past. For those of you who are just joining us for the first time. Come back and you get to hear more. We also have Dave uh, Pinkster on this evening as well. Pink? Pink he is? <laughs> yeah. Pink? Another Dave. He must really be bored. Let me know how your father is. Dave is uh, Dave Crilly. They grew up next to... Uh, to um, me when I was growing up. He's younger. I used to harass him terribly. But he deserved it. Made him the, made him the man that he is today. All right. Oh, we've got to do this. i got to hurry. I forgot about that. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm going to give you the countdown. If you haven't put your name in for the draw, do that. If you haven't uh, decided on your Purple Heart donation, do that. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Same Are time? To continue this. Are we? Yeah. You know what? I that think it might not be a bad people. idea. We do have 671 people on right now, which that's is our... That's a max. That's our new record. And well, some of them are in the UK, and we like to... UK and Europe. Ask Paul if this and is Australia. too early. If it's too early for Paul? Yeah. He's, if, this, if this works, give us a nod, and we will... Uh, I, I mean, under normal circumstances, nodding? you might be out somewhere, but not in these circumstances. So I don't mind doing it early until things change for the better. I hope we have something good to eat. I'm starving. Rex actually is peeking in. Rex uh, has Fit, salmon ready. Should yeah. we bring Chloe in? Yeah, Chloe, come here. These people want to know if you if Chloe. <laughs> Chloe, what? come in. No. They want to see if you can count. They want to know. They are complaining. They said they only got 98 screws in their bag of screws. Blame, blame. Yeah, people are liking the early time right now. All we're, right. We're calling it Corona time. <laughs> According to Gary. <laughs> Gary. Uh, Gary Burnett. <laughs> Gary. Okay, we'll do it. If at all possible, we'll do it. Remember, always work front to back on these. That way, if you accidentally blow something out, at least it's on the inside, and in some cases won't be seen at all on the front, then you gotta figure out how to fix it. Don't forget, we're, we're, we're giving you a free month, and it's not something where if you don't cancel, you're gonna get billed. That's not the way we work. Um. What? <laughs> Don't say that. That is the way we work. <laughs> on the uh, the free month, one month yeah. membership? They don't have to look at the credit card. Yeah. What? <laughs> All right. From now on, Rob knows nothing about the Yeah, website. obviously, I do the wood. All it, right. It well, then don't forget to cancel it if you don't like it, but you'll love it anyway. It used to be that way. It used to be that way? Yeah. 
Okay, I'm old. With the new system, we couldn't do it that okay, way. Okay, so here we go. Ready to put together. We're all not ready to put together because the next thing we've got to do, we've got to come in and we've got to, we, we have to cut a dado in here to put that cleat, we'll call it, because A, the cleat is, is going to be cross grain construction, so we'll secure it and it, can, it won't be glued in, but the groove will hold it fast. And at the same time, we're going to, we have to allow for seasonal movement, and then we can build the drawer for it. So we're going to be working on this for a little bit. Any final questions on that? Uh, let me check. Hmm? No. Okay. Final count on, on uh, viewers? 672 right now. They're all Remember, uh, go, to the, go to our website and register for the newsletter. Keep you up to date with all this stuff. Make sure you join our cha our YouTube channel. Jake says don't say this, but hit the ad once in a while. Just humor them. Don't hit it. Oh, oh, oh you mean yeah. watch it. Watch, watch the ad once. Yeah, do me a favor. Watch <laughs> the ad once in a while. And then I might get paid. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll move out. You guys. Today? So first, uh, first three draws are for the DVD. Are we giving them the option of the DVD or the download? Yeah. If or not the download, the uh, yeah, they can take the download, and Kay. if they've already purchased the DVD, then uh, they can take the 3D interactive plans. Okay. Got all right. That? So all the names have been posted as of right now. First prize DVD. Pick a random name. Here we go. First winner is Dana Matern. Matern. So Dana gets a DVD. Number two. Oh, by the way, Danny Bell just joined us. He wasn't aware of the... Only to know that uh, we are done. <laughs> Way to go, Dan. Patricia Razor. My best stinker in the girls. Patricia wins DVD number two. DVD number three. So when you get excited, if you see your name in that little circle, and then... <laughs> Mark, Mark Cassidy. Cassidy. Wins the, DVD. The big prize. Grand prize winner is... It's for all the marbles. David Clark. David Clark. Where's David from? Can you find out real quick? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, he didn't. He just put United States. He didn't specify. Yeah, where's so. his, oh, but we have his contact information. Yeah, we have his email. Congratulations, folks. Love giving this stuff away to you. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thanks for participating. Thanks for those who donated to the Purple Heart Project. Please, everybody, spread the word about it. Make sure that combat wounded veterans know about it so they have a fair chance to apply and come to our workshop. Don't forget to get a t-shirt. Ange, glad you were able to join us live. Although I didn't, did Lynn speak up? I didn't hear anything. Maybe Ken handled it. Anyway, have a great week. Stay healthy. Do what you're supposed to do. Stay in your house. Only go out for emergency stuff. And uh, Watch be all really your kind YouTubes. and nice to everybody and make this a pleasurable experience that for some reason we'll want to look back on it fondly because it was time we got to spend with family and unfortunately we're all family here we we break the uh 10 person rule just because there's that many of us but anyway we're still we're still busy we're still working we'll send you whatever it is you need happy woodworking have a nice weekend see you next saturday night same time ciao Okay, Chloe.